What did you see in Celgene that the market didn't, given the fact that Celgene was only selling at six times earnings before you made the move? Well, Jim, good morning. This is a great deal, and I'm excited. It's the right deal at the right time. We are creating an extraordinary company with a focus on science and innovation. Three areas, oncology, autoimmune diseases, cardiovascular disease. These are areas we know well. We diversify our pipeline. We can launch six medicines in the next 24 months, and we've got 50 more medicines that we can accelerate to patients. Okay. This is a deal that creates value for shareholders from day one. I completely agree, and I thought it was ridiculous that your stock was down. I know because it is a, you don't have a stock component. But Mark, a lot of people feel that all you have is Revlimid. Could there be anything more wrong about the description of your company? Probably not. As Giovanni talks about, there are six medicines set to launch. Five of them come from Celgene's late-stage pipeline. In fact, just before the end of the year, we submitted one of those five, Fidratinib for myelofibrosis. And at this conference just a year ago, we license it from Impact, and in one year we have submitted it to the FDA for approval in a very, very rare but important blood cancer called myelofibrosis. Now, uh, Giovanni, a lot of people feel that you did this, I'm going to use the term because I see it in the analyst reports, they're going to be wrong. Then you did it out of desperation because Updevo is not beating Merck. You needed to do something. This is something, but it's all you did was double down on oncology. Uh, to me, I think that you took advantage of the fact that the stock was at 90 and it fell to 58, but tell me. Why you had to do this, given the fact that Optiva has got so many things in the pipeline, many, many tests, although people are starting to doubt it. Well, I couldn't be more proud of what we're doing with Optiva. In fact, we have 17 indications in the U.S. alone. We've transformed lung cancer, kidney cancer, melanoma. We had a great 2018. We have leading shares in all approved indications. So Optiva is going to grow this year. We have 20 trials coming. Actually, it's the reason why we did the deal, because we have two strong franchises with Eliquis and Obdivo. This was the right time for us to add more value drivers, diversify, and again, in areas we know well, where we can add value from day one. No, uh, Mark, FDA approval of three late-stage drugs could help with a contingent value. Azanamid, a lot of people feel that was your previous, it was Bob Mugan, maybe you paid too much. Uh, LISO, uh, L-I-S-O, and right. then you've got BB2121 which with Bluebird. These all seem like long shots, but perhaps they could come in and get the nine bucks. I think the first thing, Jim, is that they're de-risked assets. They're not long shots. In fact, BB2121 is the most advanced drug in myeloma in the CAR-T space. With our partner, Bluebird Bio, we've advanced it to first in class, best in class. Lysocell was our Juno acquisition again last year. Lysocell has its pivotal phase two data in lymphoma done. And at ASH last year, just in December, we presented data in CLL, another indication for Lysocell. So the pivotal trial is done and we're working on the BLA as we speak. We expect to submit it in the first half of the year. Then we get to Azanamod. Azanamod, we did have a regulatory misstep at the start of last year. We've fixed all of the application related deficiencies and we look forward to submitting it later this quarter. Now, I have to tell you, because we got to go over this, I know that Nadim Ahmed, who's on your call all the time, president of hematology and oncology, he did say we learned a lesson in humility when you do an acquisition. He did say you wouldn't have submitted the application. It was done by the Receptos people. Has it hurt? Has it hurt what Receptos brought to you because you did make that misstep? I think that we need to step back from blame. I don't think that matters at all. I think what happens in regulatory dossiers often is we take a view that the clinical data and the data for Ozanamod are profoundly good in relapsing multiple sclerosis. And then the application had some missing uh, pieces to it, but that's not a receptive problem or cell gene problem. That's a judgment question that we're, we've corrected and we're going to submit in March. Okay. And Jim, sorry. No, go ahead. This, one of the things that we do really well at Bristol Myers Squibb is launching new medicines. We've got six medicines potentially to launch. We can't wait to start working on this. Uh, we're going to do a really great job with those launches. A lot of people tell me, Giovanni, uh, that your science is fabulous, that you did a deep dive, that you kicked the tires on all the, the drugs that are supposed to take, that really are supposed to take the place if Revlimid goes off patent earlier. But one of the things that Bob Eugen taught me was that he put money in many different companies. Have you analyzed all the farm team companies? Is there something there that we don't know about? Well, you know, we've done a lot of due diligence, of course. The companies been, have been talking for a long time. In the last few months, we've been deep at work together. There are a lot of exciting science platforms. We've done business development at Bristol Myers Squibb all our life as part of our strategy. So we know how to work with biotech companies. 
we are just going to have many more opportunities to bring forward really exciting science. Uh, Mark, why doesn't uh, Tesla come up enough? I mean, honestly, this thing is growing at 40 percent. There's incredible demand. And yet people just say, well, look, forget that. It's all about Revlimid. Yeah, I, I think, Jim, it is mostly about Revlimid in that it is our biggest selling product. Of course, the street has looked at the IP situation on Revlimid, looked out and said, can we continue this run? 2018 was a record year for the company. The fourth quarter will be a record year for the company and the quarter. But it's a Revlimid story until we diversify away from it. Otezla is part of that story, but by itself, it's less than $2 billion a year, where Revlimid next, this year will be above $10 billion. So it, it, on a relative basis, I understand why the focus has been on Revlimid. Okay, Bob, you can play open hand. He's a friend from Summit. You guys are in Summit, Summit, New Jersey. Uh, Menendez in the campaign against Bob Eugen kept saying that the reason why uh, you should not vote for Bob Eugen is endless price increases for Revlimid. What do you say about that? What I would say about price increases across the board is that different companies have their strategies. Celgene, I think Bristol Myers Squibb has been very responsible to price to value. The other thing I would say is that in the last two years, if you look at the industry across the board, we're talking about inflation adjusted pricing that's less than 1% for the entire industry. So it gets a lot of headline and a lot of headline risk, but the reality is drug pricing is attenuating and is coming down year on year on a net basis. Okay, I want to talk. I want to talk about some things that Updeva are doing because I got to tell you, Giovanni, I'm hearing kidney cancer. I'm hearing indications that we shouldn't just say, "Oh, Keith Truda is going to beat them." I'm hearing that over and over again. It's going to be a huge year for that drug, 2019. It's going to be a great year, uh, 2019 for Updeva, as I said. Uh, the product is going to grow. The medicine is going to grow. We've already issued guidance for 19. We've got over 20 clinical trials, registrational studies ongoing. There are studies in lung cancer. What's really exciting also, we have a very large program in what's called adjuvant disease. So we're going to bring immune oncology to earlier stages when we can actually have an impact that is very significant on patients. So this is a journey in immune oncology, and we are just at the beginning, and we are doing really well. But well, one last question, because I know politics do play a role these days. Uh, are you able to raise price uh, with immunity? In other words, a lot of companies, drug companies, put prices through in 2019, but a lot of drug companies, they fail. They, they fail in some drugs. Someone has to pay for that. Are you comfortable with the price increases, and do you think that this political environment is going to be too tough? We are going to continue to be, as we've always been, very responsible with drug pricing. We are delivering really innovative medicines that make a really big difference for patients. That's what we do. Uh, and uh, what's important is that patients uh, have access to medicines. That's our focus. And so it needs to be affordable. We need to align the incentives in the market. But I am confident that innovation will continue to be rewarded. Remember, we are creating a science leader here. Uh, it's really important, and that's going to be our focus. I am confident that you took advantage of an unbelievably good price, and the combination is going to be sensational. I love this deal.